is broken and cannot be mended. You must go your way. Normally she wore a silk uh, dress and jacket uh, for, at work and uh, she was very feminine. Absolutely not afraid to get her hands dirty, not afraid at all. I think it was a very elegant time. Um, the women dressed beautifully and there was a lot of quality. I have been writing as a journalist for the last decade and I was doing a community feature story for the San Diego Union Tribune. It was on a high school in Encinitas, the San Diego Union High School. And while I was doing my research, I discovered that it was built in 1936 by a lady architect by the name of Lillian J. Rice. And I wanted to find out more about her. So I went to my local library, which actually is this local library, Salon of Each Library. I couldn't find one single book on Lillian Rice. And I felt that she was very significant in that she was a woman. In the Depression years, she was clearly a principal in her own architectural firm, and yet there wasn't one single book written about her. So I decided I was going to write that book, and I did. And I have learned a lot about California history while I've been doing my research on Lillian Rice because the two are indelibly tied together through Rancho Santa Fe. There was also a movement back then, a green movement, just like we're having now. It was no different. People wanted to sleep outside. People be became vegetarians. Um, they wanted to use the natural uh, materials that were indigenous to the area to build the homes. So we saw a lot of adobe homes being built. We saw a lot of tropical plants being planted. This was, you know, it had never been done before and it was hard to believe. So they really were, you know, looking at the roots of the climate and building appropriately. And that just, to me, that just struck a chord, you know, and I found the, the whole period very interesting. So all these little aspects of California history actually get woven into Lillian Rice's history. This is a woman who really was determined to succeed in a male-dominated profession. She was a pioneer breaking through the gender gap. I think she'd probably be sad that some of her buildings have been demolished. Um, there's still quite a lot that have not been demolished. I think that would probably sadden her because, you know, her artistry was a part of her and people didn't value it enough to preserve it. Um, she was on the art jury, so she was looking at, you know, the drawings, she was looking at the plans, and she had a lot of power to say, you know, what could and what could not be built. The Generalissimo, by name Morris, started the cavalcade here we have the commissary wagon about to take its departure. At the ruins of the Hamul Ranch House, we took our nooning on the first day. No names being mentioned, no offence can be took, but some of the party went in wading around the corner under the bridge. If only Bryn Mawr could see her now. <laughs>